riding the pike lane or on a pike trail. Arkansas is one of nine states in the Union that does not have any such law restricting where a cyclist has to ride. Uh, so, if you have a bike lane, you have the option of riding in the street if you feel safe and comfortable and comply with the law, or you have the option of riding a bike lane which gives you a, a little bit of separation from vehicles. The only places in Arkansas where you must ride in a bike lane if the bike lane is there are the city of Little Rock and the city of Fayetteville. They have separate city ordinances that require that. Hmm. And with that, I'm out of time, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Hey, council member. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, from your uh, research, are there other cities in the United States who also have that ruling, like Fayetteville? On mandatory bike lanes? Pardon me? A mandatory mandatory bike, bike. bike. Is that pretty more standard than? There's about 12 states that have that at the state level. For example, our neighbors in Louisiana have that on a statewide basis. But what that does, bike lanes are more of an encouragement for more people to ride to enable them to feel safer. What they actually do in the flow of traffic it makes it more complicated because you have added an extra lane of traffic. You have positioned someone far off to the side where people aren't ordinarily looking for them to be there. The key thing about safety, whether you're in a car, riding a horse, walking or riding a bicycle, is to be visible to all the other drivers. Put yourself in a place where people are expecting to see traffic. Uh, many times you'll see, you, you can be parked here at a red light waiting for the light to change and a cyclist will ride up beside you to your right, kind of jumping the line ahead of you. Do you normally look to the right behind you before you pull out and make a right turn? Put yourself where other drivers expect to see you. Mayor. Now, wait a minute, Alderwoman Ross. And then I, I'm kind of getting confused on the bike lanes then because, I mean, you're saying that they're not necessarily safe, but we keep adding bike lanes. I mean, why are we adding bike lanes if they're not safe in some we situations? Add, we add bike lanes, and this is, a, this is a national policy. We add bike lanes because they give the cyclist or the person who uses them a perception that cars don't go there that I'm separated from the vehicles, that uh, I've got this own space of my own. But the answer is that cars go there all the time, at every intersection and street crossing, at every driveway. And for a car to turn right where there's a bike lane, he has to turn across that lane in front of the cyclist. They, they, they give a perception of safety and people feel more encouraged to use them, but they really make the traffic situation a little bit more complicated than it would be. Okay, one other question. You said that Little Rock and Fayetteville, you're, if there is a bike lane, you are required to ride in that bike lane? Yes, Is that correct? Was there a lot of opposition from the biking community on that when they passed uh, that? I, d I don't think so. These are old standards. They were adopted in 1962. We didn't have that strong a cycling community or that much cycling use at that point in time. It's just a law that's been on the book over there for the past 40 years. Can I ask your opinion on something? Yes, ma'am. Do you think that's a good law? I think that is a bad law, okay. the mandatory bike lane. I think that's a bad law because it discriminates against people who can't drive, can't afford to drive. If you look at our citizenry, over a third of our people cannot drive. Children, the elderly, for example. One other thing. I'm sorry. That's all right. You got <laughs> but, you know, I've, I've always said education instead of legislation, and we're trying to legislate education right here. And, I, you know, I respect what we're doing. I agree with it now that we've added everyone and we've not just singled out one group. Mm -hmm. What is the answer to education? I know we have the, uh, you know, Channel 4, we could run public service announcements on it. It's education. What's the answer? How, uh, how do you do that? Mayor Hayes and Mr. Voyles is working with the committee to come up and find some ways to do that. And I struggled with that idea a lot myself when I first looked at and studied this particular ordinance. And the conclusion I came to on my own basically is, just like at work, people do best what the boss checks up on. And if there's an idea that there's some consequence for this particular type of action, people will be probably less, less likely to do those sorts of things. Okay, one more thing. Now, do you go into the schools and education and for as far as, I, I mean, I was coming down North Hills the other day and the kid was probably 14, 15. He's driving on the wrong side. That's a, you know, 
is riding his bike the wrong way down North Hills, and that was very, very dangerous. It, just cutting in out and facing the traffic. Riding the wrong way against traffic is the quickest way to become a dead cyclist. Well, I know. Right. Uh, yes. The second quickest way is to run red lights and stop signs. Mm -hmm. and we've had several of those killed here in Pulaski County this year. Uh, in fact, we've had four cyclists killed in the state of Arkansas. Three of those died because they ran a stop sign or they read, ran a red light. One of the things I know that we're working with uh, Chief Bradley and and trying to uh, obviously you know start with own, our own personnel you know and and the police department obviously is at the, at the top of the list you know we're not in this to go out and start writing tickets but I I dare say that you know most of our officers may or may not know you know the rights and responsibilities of, of bicyclists uh, and so you know what what we want to do is move in that direction. And, and to do the best we can uh, to try to educate, but then as we write citations to motorists, uh, it would be our full intent at some point, you know, after we try to uh, heighten the awareness level of, of, you know, I mean, that cyclist, uh, to me, that was going the wrong way uh, on, on that, uh, you know, facing traffic, uh, you know, if that person got a ticket now, I don't know that I'm saying that's what we're gonna start doing, but then I bet you that'd be the last time they'd go the wrong way on that, and may and may be alive in, in the future. And so, you know, you know, we're I know I'm committed, and through this council's help, I hope we become one of the most bike aware, and as be, as we're bike aware or non motorized aware or responsibilities of, of the use of our roadways, you know, that that people will become, you know, knowledge is, is power, and much more knowledge that they have will understand that people. You know, are not abusing their rights, but they're uh, uh, honoring their rights and enjoying those rights. You know, last time I re I recommended uh, having a committee. I mean, we do committees here. We do for this. I mean, why do we not have like a biking pedestrian committee? Where they, I mean, we have a green committee. I mean, about trash, about saving. You know, but I mean, we, I still think the city needs a, a, a committee that, that look at education, that, to look at the trails. That, this, that may very well be something that, that we we, we we move forward, and obviously any any, any council member can propose yeah. that. And I know that we have a, yeah. a very dedicated group that have been working through filling out an application for our bike friendly community status, and and that group is a is a good core group of individuals. Tom serves on it. We have cardiologists that's on it. We've got. A variety of other folks that are both North Little Rock people and and some that are North Little Rock friends. So, you know, as we move through this, that may very well be a good uh, opportunity to try to help reach out and uh, and educate even more people about what these rights and responsibilities are. Uh, okay, you're, you're, I got a couple of three things, but your committee that you're suggesting is we have a trails committee that was founded probably six or seven years before I ever even started riding a bicycle. The cardiologist that uh, uh, the mayor referred to is the one that's really kind of helped design our trails map and plan here in the city of North Little Rock for the last several years. We've, when, we, when we put in a trail, we take in pedestrians in consideration too, walkers and joggers, not just cyclists. If we as a committee were to come to you and say you need sidewalks in Ward 1 and here's where we want them, you as an alder person make the decisions about sidewalks. I don't think you want a committee telling you where you need sidewalks. I know Murray and I, we try to spend our money, y'all try to spend your money, but we don't need any help in, in telling us where we need, we know where we need sidewalks. But the trails in the past committee that we've got in place takes pedestrians, walkers and joggers, in consideration when we put in a path. We're trying to we're trying to connect all of the subdivisions in North Little Rock with a type of path or trail to where people can ride to the grocery store or they can ride to work or they can connect to the river trail without having to worry about competing with vehicular traffic. That's our long range plan is to do that. We're working on the spur from thirty uh, third or thirty seventh street out to Camp Robinson. Hopefully convert that from a rail to a trail one of these days. What a wonderful way to, con co to connect the, the center part of the city. But anyway, that's, that's when, when, when coming up with another committee, we've got a committee in place that I think takes your concerns in, in, in consideration. Now, as far as the, the 
the law over in Little Rock and up in Fayetteville that they have to use a bike lane or a bike trail if there is one. In recent weeks, we've had some serious discussions about how many miles of actually paved trails that we have here in North Little Rock. And there's a difference between a bike lane and a bike trail and a bike route. We've got 111, I believe it's 111 miles, isn't it, Tom, of yes, sir. designated bike bicycle route routes in the city of North Little Rock. But only a fraction of that is actually a paved designated trail. A bike lane. A bike lane. A bike and lane. over in Little Rock, where if you'll, if you'll, if, if you'll look over to Little Rock, you'll see they, they utilize a lot of bike route signs. When there's really not a bike lane or a bike trail in place, they've taken the street, put a bike route up all throughout the city of Little Rock. Fort Smith is a, is a tremendous user of the bike route sign where there is no sidewalk, there's no bike lane, and there's not even necessarily a wide shoulder, but yet they've designated that as a bike route. So over in Little Rock, Little Rock even has less miles of paved surface than we have here in North Little Rock. That is an antiquated law there. And you have a hard time finding paved bike routes in the city of Little Rock. So, and Tom, tell them about the bike rodeo that you're going to be doing this Saturday on the parking lot of North Little Rock Electric to educate youngsters for the North Little Rock Boys and Girls Club. This, this goes right back directly to your question. We do work actively with bike education in our school systems. Our, with the No Child Left Behind and the Teach to the Test things the school districts are following now, there's not a lot of opportunity to actually do bike or physical education there. What we've started doing with our uh, local group, Bicycle Advocacy of Central Arkansas, we've started working through the local Boys and Girls Clubs here in Little Rock and North Little Rock. On June 27th, we held a cycling skills clinic at the Whetstone Boys and Girls Club over uh, just off 65th Street. And we gave 17 kids a bike, a helmet, and seven hours of instruction on how to ride that safely in traffic. Uh, this Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we're, we're coming to North Little Rock, and we're doing it here at the Weatherington Club down at the uh, intersection of 13th and Main. And we should have 12 kids signed up for that. And I invite the council to come out and see us, see what we're doing, see what the youngsters of Arkansas are learning. One more thing. Go ahead. I just have one more thing that in Ward 1, as far as where sidewalks can go, we appreciate any input that we get. We listen to Mike Smith, the city engineer, that it's not just the two of us. We'll take any help we can get on recommendations. So, Let, let me just add a little bit to, to why that, I mean, you know, you know, I think there may very well be an opportunity, and I'm not so sure what kind of committee that, that I would at this point suggest. You know, whether it be a committee of bicyclists, whether it be a committee of uh, uh, motorists, whether it be a committee of motorcyclists, whether it be a committee of pedestrians. I mean, to me, you know, I'm still trying to feel what really, you know, would be the best way to move forward with an educational program. Uh, and, and, and so while I appreciate the suggestions, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to find what I might think would be, and, and obviously suggestions are all, you know, all, all welcome. I mean, no one com commands a, a, a exactly right way to do it, but I'm still kind of grappling with what I, I, at least I would think, would be the best way to move our educational uh, efforts of right-of-ways and those responsibilities forward. And I don't know that just a bike group would be what I would think would be best or just one discipline or other, but I think I'd come back to maybe the tenor of this legislation, you know, and that is, you know, those that have rights and responsibilities uh, of, of all of our right-of-ways, whether it be sidewalks, shoulders, uh, bike lanes, uh, you know, uh, our actual lanes. Uh, so, you know, maybe not just a bike committee, maybe a right-of-way committee or something to that effect, but I, I think that we need to to kind of grapple with a little bit of what would be the charge of this committee. And I, I don't know that I disagree with what Alderman Ross is saying, but I'm, I'm still wanting to try to get, at least I am, a better feel for what really we, uh, you know, what I think, you know, uh, we'd like to do. And, and to me, my feeling is, is to try to, you know, to try to learn the rights and responsibilities of all the use of our right-of-ways and, uh, and, and to, to advocate that kind of an education so that people who use them uh, won't feel like 
others are abusing them when they actually have rights to use them. Now, that may sound sort of silly, but in any event, you know, yes, ma'am. Through all this, one thing I hadn't thought of before, I, I'm hearing that do we have bike lanes in places in our city that we really don't need them? Not that I'm If that question is no, there, we really only have bike lanes in one location. Robert, correct me if I'm wrong, two locations. North Hills, North Hills Boulevard in front of Lakewood Gardens, Military. Crystal Hill Road. That's the only two places that we well, have military, bike lanes. Military. Well, military, no, I think uh, between a bike lane and a bike path. I'm talking about bike lanes. Bike lane, just or a, stri a lane has been striped, right? That's correct, yeah. Over on the side. Yes. Okay. Lakewood, uh, uh, in front of Lakewood Gardens on North Hills and Crystal Hill Road. Donovan Briley, the shoulder is wide enough for a bike lane, and we are in the process of getting bike emblems, pedestrian emblems, put in those on those shoulders. That's a designated bike lane, but it's not identified as such at this point. That's the only three locations that we have in North Little Rock that you could call a bike lane. Let me tell you one other that has been approved by the highway department, but it hadn't been marked yet, and, and that is you know, on, on, on the, at least the eastern portion of Riverfront Drive, you know, because of, you see how wide it is. Now, they've authorized us to stripe it. We haven't done it yet. We're trying to decide whether that's something we want to do or to build a designated bike path. Uh, so, you know, that's been authorized by the highway department. It's their highway, but we haven't moved forward with that uh, at this point. What is it? All right. I understood there were routes, trails, and lanes. Is, is a path something else? Is it a fourth category? Uh, bicycle lanes are standard road marking right. off to the side, to the right side of the roadway. Mm -hmm. uh, bicycle routes, typically you have higher speed motor traffic, uh, 35 miles an hour or greater, where cyclists are basically ride to the right of the road. It's what we call speed positioning. Faster traffic moves to the left, slower traffic, which is usually bicycles, farther to the right, stops traffic off the road somewhere. Uh, those are designated by the little green bike route signs you see. Bicycle routes are uh, basically shared lanes, again with the uh, bike route sign and the big yellow warning sign, share the road. So Bas basically traffic speed is what you're looking at in lane width. So what's a bike path then? A bicycle path is completely separate. Uh, something like the uh, side path off on Military Road going into Camp Robinson, where it's, it's physically separate from the traffic way. Uh, the river trail from uh, the skate park all the way out to Cook's Landing is, 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 is for the most part a bike path. It is physically separated from the motor roadway. Thank you. Anyone else? Tom, thank you, Mr. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Art. I forgot. I see where he signed up for several, and I neglected to see where 948. And I think if anybody else I've missed had signed up, let me know because that's the last one I see now. I'm very much for this, but over on military, I think it's very disrespectful when they ride three abreast, and uh, the traffic can't get by when there's a lot of congested traffic when they're going into military for drill or something. So, Charlie, you said you knew who they were. I wish you'd pass it on. I said I didn't know who they were. But, you know, that's, it's, this is a good, this is good. I have no quarrels with it. But when they get out there and ride three abreast and won't let the traffic by, that isn't right. Thank you. Well, and that's where we're, what we're all trying to do. And I really appreciate the discussion tonight. And I want to thank those who have uh, been a part of it. I think we're all a little bit more educated, perhaps those at home, you know, or, or have shared in that education. And we're going to try to keep doing the best we can. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hold it. I, I would intend to you know, read it and call it the next uh, council meeting. Uh, with that, <coughs> next item. Mayor, are you going to vote on your amendment? Oh, we didn't vote on it, Ms. Whitby? No. Hold on, let me that get to it. Public. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought we did. Tonight. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go back uh, and, and, uh, and, 
and now let's go back to the regular agenda. I think we're getting ready to start. If not, now you have, do you want to just have people come talk when the items are called? Well, no, let's go ahead and get that done. That way we can have it, uh, you know, folks can comment. Remember our three-minute rule, uh, if I could. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and start. I'm glad Ms. Whitby reminded me. Uh, we have uh, uh, the remainder of those who have signed up. Uh, as I said, uh, if you signed up, come uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and indicate the legislation you want to speak to. And particularly, like I said, those that have signed up, remember, you know, three minutes and uh, the microphone's open. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Jack Finnegan. I'm co-chairman of the Bering Cross Neighborhood Association. I'd like to speak against 0952. Uh, I personally, in the Bering Cross Neighborhood Association, have been very strong supporters of the Rockwater development. We supported the changing uh, the zoning for the traditional uh, village concept, the TIF, the overlay district, and of course the roundabout. Uh, when I received word about the new uh, apartment, I was, it was positive. But after I got to looking at it and thinking about it, I've got some major issues and our, my organization has some. One, from the word go, we were told that River Road did not have the foundation to support a major traffic artery. Therefore, the major entrance going into the development would be off 3rd Street with a secondary entrance off of either 7th or 8th Street. Uh, this will change. Uh, the 27 acres left to be developed after the apartment, if these 13 acres are approved, uh, the entrance will have to be major one off of either 7th or 8th Street. The residents on 8th Street are not in support of being a major thoroughfare. Uh, also, it brings up a question, what about the roundabout? Where it is presently supposed to be located, going into 3rd Street, is basically from the standpoint uh, losing a lot of its effectiveness. Uh, Two or three hundred cars coming off the apartments, yes, it would help them, but what about the new development and also the other development in the lower Bering Cross area? Also, I have a question uh, about whether or not the overlay district, when we approved it or supported it, we bought into the traditional village concept. This restricted the land owners in the, Bering, the lower Bering Cross area from 9th Street South to what they could do. Now, uh, also, the traditional village concept does allow for apartments. Now, in changing over the new apartments, changing the zoning on them, basically is doing away with the uh, overlay district. This is not fair to the other uh, property owners in the Bering Cross area. Uh, this is not legislation that is good for the Bering Cross area, and we feel also the city of, of North Little Rock. We do support development, but not this, and we ask the council to consider either sending this back to planning or killing it until we can uh, get some of these issues addressed. Thank you. Let me, uh, and I know I've had a chance to, uh, to visit with Alderman Taylor, so let me just mention uh, so that those who make comments can certainly go ahead and make their comment, but that, that and Alderman Taylor obviously feel free to comment, uh, but that uh, I know I have voiced both to the developers as well as to the owner uh, that I had a great deal of concern about the roadway layout, uh, and I know in talking uh, briefly with Alderman Taylor that, uh, that I had asked if he would consider holding this legislation uh, at the very minimum until next council meeting that we would call a public hearing uh, on this uh, uh, legislation. And I know that, uh, that absent a revision of the roadway plan, you know, I have <laughs> indicated to all parties I would have to oppose this uh, uh, legislation. So, so everybody that uh, you know has signed up again. You're welcome to speak, but you know, Alderman Taylor, I wish you would kind of comment too that that if uh, if, if 
Alderman Taylor uh, goes forward with what I think he will, then we're going to hold the legislation will not be called tonight. It will simply be read, and then uh, then uh, you know we'll hold a public hearing at the next council meeting, uh, and that, that would be the very minimum, obviously subject to Alderman Taylor's uh, you know further direction, but. I know that I've got some grave concerns and have voiced those to all parties. So with that, you know, all those that have signed up, certainly welcome to on the public hearing. Uh, but that, uh, Alderman Taylor, you may want to comment, uh, but to my knowledge, based on our visit, it will not be called tonight. Alderman? That's, uh, that's correct, Mayor. We, uh, uh, after our discussion, uh, I do feel that we, knew we need to convene a um, uh, public comment uh, not public comment, a uh, public, hearing. public hearing on the matter uh, because there, there are several concerns. I have concerns as far as uh, uh, River Road, the Third Street, and also the roundabout. So we need to make sure that we're absolutely clear what's going to happen and how, how those issues are going to be addressed. So um, this, you know, as you said, Mayor, we have it uh, read one time and held for the uh, public hearing at next uh, council meeting. Yeah, and let me just add before I uh, turn it over to Alderman Robinson before we open it up for public comments, uh, and, and that is that you know, I've been told by our city engineer that uh, we ought to get the green light this week to go forward with bidding our roundabout. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that the plans that this city uh, had were all contingent on that third street being a, you know, being a part of the road network. So, you know, this city has made, you know, substantial plans based on cooperation with the original develop or this and still the owners of the property, and uh, and so you know I have grave concerns that unless that roadway plan is somewhat similar to what you know we move forward with that it may very well have an effect on our roundabout and we're ready to go visit excuse me we're ready to go bid uh that sometime next month uh, so you know i'm, I'm going to be very reluctant to, to change things unless it does not appear that it would have a any kind of uh, significant effect on the on the flow of traffic vis-a-vis -vis the plans that we've been operating under for about two or three or at least a couple years with that alderman robinson what I'd like to see done, and if at all possible within two weeks, is that the developers sit down with the community and show them renderings or drawings of, as to the apartments and, and all of that. That is what I would like to see. Is the developer here? No, I, they, 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 they were. Let me put it this way, because uh, okay. I know when I was coming into the meeting, they came up to me and, and indicated that they thought there were questions that needed to be answered and that they you know, wondered if it was going to move forward tonight. And I said, after having talked to Alder Alderman Taylor, that I did not believe it was uh, and that we were in all likelihood going to hold it. And so they, they, I think, went ahead and left. So I, I know the message has been delivered that, that there are significant concerns that need to be addressed uh, prior to this council. Maybe, and maybe they can't be addressed, but that what you suggest needs to be done absolutely and I, I would like for it to be done prior to the next city council meeting prior to the public hearing well and i think you're absolutely right I, you know the thing is is that you know, i would feel before, if they're interested in having a affirmative vote of this council they better get it done before the vote's called because i don't know that that you know that they're I think there are more questions than answers right now, and uh, and so if 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 they, you know, my feeling is if they if they want the council to seriously consider it, they need to make, you know, some some serious, sincere effort to address some of the concerns, some of which I'm sure we're going to hear tonight. I didn't know if this is time. Are we going to wait? Are you going to read this later? Or so open it for discussion. Or are we discussing it right now? Well. I tell you what, since there's so many people that have, have commented on it, let's go ahead and just get it for the council so we can dispose of it before we, uh, uh, you know, Alderman Taylor, I think, is just going to have it read. So, Ms. Whitby, go ahead and, with, with his permission, go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. 00952, Alderman Taylor, an ordinance reclassifying certain property located on River Road, west of Division and south of 7th Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from traditional neighborhood development, TNT. TN D to R4 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property. First reading, and I also understand there's an amendment to correct a couple of things. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if you want to go ahead and do that, and then I think it might be a good idea so everybody that's here will know that we go ahead and indicate, I assume, uh, again, with your, you know, with your leadership, uh, that it'll be held, and we'll go ahead and call a public hearing, and then, and then we can start with the public comment. So uh, what, what, why don't we, it's been read, uh, why don't we move, well, we got, I can't move for adoption because we're going, let's just move to amend, if you want to do that correction. So moved. Second. All right, what's the amendment? The amendment is correcting. Uh, David Jones is not the applicant. The applicant is actually uh, Greg Jocelyn, and it is also not, not adopting an amended land use plan. So it's striking that language. Okay, so that's clean up legislation. Is that your motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Question. Question? They also delete section two, which refers to a land use plan. That's what they said. That's what. All right, on the motion to amend. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Paget? Yes. Pike? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, all right, now let's go ahead and, uh, and, and Alderman uh, Taylor has indicated he'd hold it, and I will, uh, with, uh, with, uh, without objection from the council, call a public hearing on this at 705 next council meeting. With that, microphone's open. Are we going to get to ask any questions? Oh, did you have another comment? I'm sorry. I, I just have a question. I want to know what happens to the TIF. Well, at this point, I don't know. I mean, nothing happens because no action is being taken. But, I mean, if this does move forward, will they be eligible for TIF financing I, on I the mean, apartment? At this moment, you'd have to ask a lawyer. I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that. Jeez, I'm going to wait. That's one of the other questions. That's one of the other questions that we need to get answered. Yeah. I mean, I, at this moment, I don't, you know, I, I honestly just don't know. I mean, I don't know that this is in accordance with the plan, you know, so, you know, somebody would have to tell us, but I'm not sure. But at this point, nothing's going to happen to the TIF because nothing's being done by this council. Yes, ma'am. I'm Sue Parker, and I'm here to speak on the proposed apartment. I share a boundary line with these good folks, and uh, I want to let you know that I do want development down there. I have waited patiently for development down there for many a year, and uh, I had been promised that when it comes, it will be great. And uh, when I thought the Rockwood uh, rock wall was coming, that just seemed like a dream come true. There would be. Uh, uh, individual homes built down there but now I understood at the back of those there were to be some multi-family and so uh, I mean I just thought that was wonderful and then out of the blue of course they did try to buy my land and it was not for sale and uh, so when I saw when I went to the Planning Commission and saw what they were going to build it is eight separate buildings and uh, it would empty out onto River Road, and I think it, I thought it was 240, but I've been corrected tonight, is 250 something apartments. And those apartments would be three stories high, would be all the way across River Road. So what that does, any hopes or dreams of it ever being individual homes down there is just, it's not gonna happen because who is going to come in and build nice homes behind an apartment complex? So what we're going to see, uh, I think, I may not be correct, but I think that I see just apartments in the rest of the way down there. So if they're coming onto River Road and that's 254 apartments, that's a lot of automobiles coming out there every day. And uh, if anybody knows anything about apartments, it's me. I own quite a few apartment buildings. And uh, try as you may. The police calls on apartment complexes will average, I would say, at least three to one to individual homes. So this will be uh, another uh, burden on our police department as well as our fire department and uh, all that extra traffic down there. So uh, I envisioned if it, was not, if it was not going to be homes, I envisioned something high end like Canal Point or uh, across the river, I've been in the vertical lofts. If you've not seen those, they're worth going to see. They have, uh, e they sell for around 400,000 each. People buy them. They are homeowners and they live in them and then they pay their taxes. And that brings uh, a continuity down into that district. And when you've got apartments, it's a constant come and go. And I know what I'm talking about. And uh, 
So uh, even the ones that are over here on Maple Street, I mean, I could see something like that being developed down there that people would buy and it would be a community. And of course, if something went in like that, well, of course, I wouldn't mind building maybe two myself and live in one down there. But, um, uh, and this is out of state people. And uh, in 10 years, apartments, if they're not really maintained, begin to go down. And, uh, and I know. And uh, we've seen a, some evidence here in this city of some that were sold that go down into Levy, and that was out of state owners. And I think they keep Chief Bradley real busy down there. So uh, that's, that's my concerns. If it's going to be multiple family, then make it multiple family that people are going to buy and be homeowners instead of just apartments that are going to rent and we don't know what's going to happen over the period of time. So, and that's a lot of area down there to give up on and let it become apartments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, remember, we are going to have a public hearing on this next council meeting. Uh, feel free. Those who signed up, we're not going to try to you know, cut you off, but uh, recognize that it's going to be brought back up and not voted on tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Scott Miller. I spoke before here in support of this pro project back two years ago, and I want to talk briefly about the money involved. Uh, I met with a developer, one of the principal developers, Tuesday. Um, he did not reach out to me. I reached out to him and actually spent about an hour and a half over a beer talking over the, across the street talking about this project. Um, yes, it is still in the TIF district. He has promised not to use TIF money to fund the apartment developments. Personally, is what he told me. Um, however, there still is TIF money that will be accrued from the apartment complex that the city will then use to build utilities and improvements on the remaining 26 acres. Essentially, if you believe the press reports on Channel 4 News at a $21 million investment, if that's the appraised value, that means the developer will get approximately $30,000 a year from the city, from the county, and the school district for improvements not made on the apartment complex to be done on the remaining 26 acres. Are you going down a slippery slope if that, you know, essentially that's a gift. Are you going down a slippery slope? If that's not enough money to put in the utilities, do we see another apartment complex rezone back here for another 13 acres? Essentially, you know, essentially it's a gift. And if the TIF money's not needed for the apartments, isn't the honorable thing to do to amend the TIF plan and amend the apartments out of the TIF plan? I mean, really, should that be in there? Talking about the apartments, if you look very carefully at the apartment map you have in front of you, you'll notice it's superimposed over single family lot plans. You actually can see the single family lot plans still underneath it. The developer in his meeting attempted to say that multi-use apartments were always part of the traditional neighborhood development. That is absolutely correct. However, they were mixed in to the commercial aspects. They were on second and third stories. When queried about to please show me on the original charrettes that I was involved in, the original maps that were done, where a, not to run down the name, but Lindsay type apartment complex with big asphalt lots, gated community, garages facing with the back walls facing outward was on the original plans. There was no response because frankly there is no response. It doesn't exist in the original plans. Apartments are sold. Well, back up. Remember, in 25 years, this city council will get this tax base back from the TIF, whether it be apartments or single family homes. My question is, what are you getting back in a tax base in 25 years? Will you be getting back single family homes that have appraised significantly, or will you be getting back a 25 year old apartment complex? And I ask you, each of you, how many 25 year old apartment complex have appraised nearly as much over time or increased in value nearly as much over time as a development, a traditional neighborhood development? Think about that, just, and I'll wrap up here in just a second. Um, apartments are sold differently. They're sold on cash flow. Apartments are sold on occupancy rates, not on property values, just the nature of the beast with a commercial property. I want to leave you with two thoughts, though. Quick thoughts, Scott. You're over. Yes. Uh, I appreciate that. I know there's been some other uh, uh, quick thoughts. The amendment. The TIF plan included a financial plan that was approved by this city council. I urge you to send this back to planning, but to also require that the amended financial plan, because without an amended financial plan, you don't know what the effects are on the neighborhood, this lot, or anything else. Also, 
13 acres is what the rezoning is, approximately six square blocks. Think about between here in the ballpark from Broadway to Riverfront Drive. If a developer came to you, said, I want to rezone that for apartments, close it off, make it a gated community, and cut off access to the river from Argento or in any neighborhood, would you even seriously consider that? That's what I want you to leave with thoughts of. Hello, Mayor. Hello. Council. Um, my name is Kirk Rogers. I'm a GIS analyst and instructor at the University of Arkansas Little Rock. I would like you to consider the census track. If we build these apartments in this area, it will skew the numbers of homeowners versus renters and will affect any monies that the city receives from the ARRA, I think that's the American Recovery and Revitalization Act. Secondly, the crime in the area around the apartment complex will be, will be greatly increased. Now, as a GIS analyst and a statistician, I didn't come prepared tonight, but the next hearing I will come with numbers for you comparing apartment complexes versus single family homes. We in the neighborhood were promised single family homes in a mixed development. I also butt up right back to Ms. Farrell and Mr. Jackson's property. Last house on the left on West Knight. I've lived there for 17 years. We organized earlier and defeated one project. We accepted this one because we understand that we have to grow. But growing like this is not the answer. And I appreciate your time and I will see you next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor. Mr. Oh, Tyler. Sorry. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Bobby Taylor. I know this complex is not in my area, but the next one may be. And I would just like to say, why does these people not have a choice of what is moved in in their neighborhood. I know we got several of them between here and Rose City. We got some in Rose City. And the police spends, I don't know how much time in them places. I would like to see, uh, or as a traffic jam for one thing, going and coming, that these apartment houses be built in a boundary outside the city limits to where the annex would be within the next 10 years, the city would not annex past where these apartment houses are built. Give them a place to where they'll have a little bit of freedom. And then when the apartment houses goes to start going down, they won't take the neighborhood down like these people are talking about and like the ones that's around them now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. We've got about three or four others that have signed up. Uh, Mr. Patrick. Thank you. Patrick Stair. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. I live in the Argenta neighborhood, so I'm not uh, directly affected by this, but I am a neighbor to the Bering Cross neighborhood, and I also use the river trail to get to and from work every once in a while and just for fun. The original neighborhood design that was put up was a marvelous design of sustainability and smart growth and it was in it was performed with a lot of a lot of neighborhood input and it was a blessing I think to Bering Cross but it also got from Bering Cross the way it was designed was it was open to the whole neighborhood around it you had traffic going in and out it would contribute to the growth and stability of Bering Cross at the same time that it would receive some of the energy and the great architecture of Bering Cross. There was a synergistic effect that would help not just Bering Cross but also the Argenta neighborhood and the whole city of North Little Rock. It would make the river trail a beautiful place. The traffic was carefully designed to be spread out to work with the roundabout to flow gently into the surrounding areas. This is just a block of apartments worthy of West Little Rock plopped down in the middle of a small area that is going to completely block any potential or at least seriously inhibit potential growth and development of the Bering Cross area. 
Now the original design did have some apartments, but they were carefully integrated in to a design that not only worked for the whole neighborhood and the city, but also intergenerationally. They talked about having people live, grow there through the years as a young person, as an old person, as someone with children, as somebody who would retire and go through the different forms of housing and stay in something, <clears throat> stay in a neighborhood designed to last for generations. Apartment buildings are designed to last a couple of decades at best. The original traditional neighborhood development was something that was designed to last and to contribute to North Little Rock for decades and generations to come. This apartment complex does nothing for anybody except some out-of-state developers, and I'm opposed to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are several others that are signed up. And they're not, don't have to talk now if you don't want to. Are we doing all of them at once? Yes. Mayor, Councilman, my name is Jim Tolliver. Been up here several times speaking on the nuisance of the body shops. The only nuisance I can see is the bill itself. When we get stood up and give the Pledge of Allegiance, it ended with liberty and justice for all. I don't see any liberty or justice at all in either of these things. <clears throat> I don't think that uh, there's been any input put into what it takes to run a body shop. It's not like running a beauty shop. You've got to have the cars there to work on. We take them in as they come in. It's a hard business. We try to keep it as clean as we can. And I had a statement I was going to make, and I'm not going to do it. I, I should. But, like I said, I, I still say we've been in business nearly 80 years out there, and I would, I would love to see a grandfather clause put in this Robinson's bill. Wouldn't hurt a thing in the world for that, and I'd say 50 years would be a good starting point for it. I appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Tolliver. Let me go ahead and, uh, and, and I certainly didn't want to cut Mr. Tolliver off, but right now since we have the, the, the legislation we have in front of us is on uh, the uh, uh, 0952. So let's get that out of the way before we spread ourselves broader than that. Mr. Taylor, didn't you speak on 52? No, mine's 47. I'm, okay, I'm so on yeah. 52. Right. So let's stay on 52 until we get that. There's several others that have signed up for 52. That doesn't mean you have to speak. So I'm going to give the last call for 0952. Going once. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Just one thing for for the gentleman. That's the statistician. Uh, the, the, when I spoke with the, the developer, these these are intended to be high-end apartment complexes that rent anywhere from a dollar to a dollar ten per square foot. So when when you when you uh, uh, comprise your stats, just make sure that we get stats on low-end developments and stats on high-end developments. You will. Yeah, promise. Thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, we've got, uh, you know, uh, Michelle Brown, Harlan Howitz, it looks like, if I'm reading right, Brad Williams, Nicole uh, Willis. Uh, so we're not, we're not, again, we're saying that you're eligible, but we're going to go ahead and move on again. They, uh, Mayor, uh, on 0952, just can I have a question of Robert Bowles? Sure. Okay, well, let me just go ahead and adjourn the public hearing then at this point. Uh, uh, until Actually, I'll, I won't adjourn. I'll recess it until the next council meeting. Robert, I, you, you know this. I've had a couple of discussions with uh, the developers and even an architect, and you know my concerns about River Road and how the traffic from the apartments would affect River Road and the River Trail. Also, when they came, normally when, when, when a developer comes in front of the planning commission, they have some type of architectural drawing. They did. Do yeah. they have they one do for have this? One. They've, Can, um, they've amended it from the il first illustration to a illustration of entry off River Road, and you'll see that at the next meeting. At the, okay, at the next meeting we'll be provided with that drawing or that yes. or copy of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Alderman Taylor, just a second, Alderman Taylor, 
Did you have anything? No. Okay, Alderman Ross. I, I'd just like to say to Mr. Bowles that I hope they don't just bring it to us that night that we'd like to see that beforehand. That's well, that. I, I, you know, at least my indication is that I'm going to be a no vote okay, uh, if, uh, if, if they don't convince me otherwise. So it's up to them. And if they, you know, if, if, if they have not uh, taken the effort to try to convince us either individually or collectively, I think the earlier the better. You know, I know where my vote is, so that's up to them to see whether they want to change it. Uh, with that, uh, we still have, uh, oh, with that, and then we'll move on uh, back to public, general public comment. Uh, that'll be held. It'll be held for a public hearing uh, at 705 next council meeting. Uh, we, we still have uh, some people who have signed up. Joe Reynolds on 47, Jim Ard on 47, uh, uh, Bobby Taylor on 47, uh, Mr. Tolliver, I think, just spoke on 47. Uh, why don't we see who all wants to talk on 47? We have Jim and John Tolliver that have signed up to speak on 47. So, Mr. Taylor? Good evening, Mayor. I'm back again. Hey, hey we appreciate it. I got. Y'all started on me a few months ago, back in fact, three or four years ago. Made me clean up my cars behind my shop. And I'd like to see that continue on down Broadway, down Engle Highway, and even through Rose City and North Little Rock. Them cars, some of them cars have been sitting there so long you can't even see the wheels on them. Some of them don't even have no wheels on them. Some of them don't have no motors in them. Some of them don't have no doors on them. And I'd like to see Rose City come back to where it used to be for these junk cars. I'd like to see them cleaned up while they're sitting in front of a body shop on Broadway or well, they're sitting in somebody's yard at home. If they're not running, they need to get rid of them. I had to get rid of mine. So I expect the same, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Yes, sir, Mr. Tolliver. Mayor, my name is John Tolliver. I, um, I run a muffler shop down on Pike Avenue. I know this doesn't directly affect me, but occasionally it would. Um, there are exotic automobiles that you just simply can't fix in a day or two that it may take several months to get parts for. <clears throat> um, my brother Jim, he's got no alternative but to leave them out front. I don't have that problem, but I do think it's wise to look at these places that have been in business for, well, I, my dad started that body shop in 1942, and he's continued to run it since then, since he passed away. and. And we, we, several of my brothers have got businesses in North Little Rock, and um, and it just appears that we need a little bit of assistance in the type of work that we do. That that you don't just throw us out like the water with the baby. You know, just give us an opportunity to fit into the community, not necessarily opposing that we look better, or we try to look better, that we improve our image, and all that's good for the city, and I think we're, speaks for ourselves that, that we're good citizens of the city. We've been here an awfully long time and paid an awful lot of taxes and uh, would like to continue to cooperate with the city. And I think that there's just no one that can't do a little bit better. It's just that whenever you put legislation in place that says, that you cannot have an inoperable car in front of your business is just too big a blanket. Because if you, I mean, my dad used to have used cars out in front of his place all the time. And if you went out there and tried to start them early in the morning, half of them might not start. Now, is that an inoperable car or is that not? And, and I, the gentleman that spoke before, I, now if you've got trees growing up through them and things like that, I think that goes without question. But I would like for some consideration from the council about businesses that are trying, we're struggling just like everybody else, trying to make it, and uh, just a little bit of consideration about whether you adopt a legislation that will simply just shut us down, essentially, if, you, if, you, if it just gets too big a blanket. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, anyone else on 47 that hasn't spoken? Mr. Ard? Good evening, I'm Jim Ard. Mr. Toller's been around a good while, and some of these others, if I understand correctly, he tried to get other people to come down here and speak, and 
it's just hard to get people to come down here and stand up and say what they feel. But I feel he should be allowed to leave those cars out that he's working on. I don't feel he should be allowed, if he's doing it, to have cars set out there he's robbing parts off of, and that's all they're setting out there for. But he has a customer who has cars. I had mine in the shop for a while, and I know it took a while to get parts. I do feel he should be allowed to carry on his business. This council should not be trying to drive businesses out of North Little Rock. They should be trying to promote it. I realize I don't have a car lot or a car body shop, but I do feel he should have the opportunity, along with the other people that said this type of work, to continue business. These are hard times right now. Could get harder. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. R. Anybody else signed up for 47? All right, if you have and uh, are not coming forward, then we appreciate it. Uh, let's see now, who have we got? Uh, we've got uh, Mr. R, you signed up to speak on 123. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Taylor is 52. Uh, and Mr. Stair, 123. And then uh, Mr. Baggett didn't indicate what he wanted to speak on. Those are all that's left. Come on. And I'm timing. First, since I have three minutes, let me take time to thank this council to letting us speak on things like this. We didn't used to get to do this. I think it brings a lot more to these meetings. I don't know if it changes your vote or not. But at least we get to speak out. So thank you very much for allowing us to do this instead of having to wait to public comment. I don't think you should ex uh, put the time on these signs where they've got the committees going because people will use these signs for uh, promote their business. So I think you all let them start having the permits again as long as they comply with your 15 second rule. And I, I feel strongly about that, and I wish other people would feel that way, too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ard. Uh, we have several others. Okay, Mr. Stair. Thank you. I actually, I agree with uh, Mr. Ard on one thing. It's really great to be able to come up here and talk. I'm Patrick Stair, by the way. Uh, it's great to be able to come up here to talk. I frequently talk about how fun it is being in North Little Rock and being able to do this. But I disagree with Mr. Ard in that I think that the extension should go through uh, I and a number of other people were rather uh, interested in the, the whole issue when it first came up. And since then, we haven't heard a peep. Uh, nobody's said anything that we, they know of any movement on this. I think this is a very delicate issue that requires a lot of thought and uh, maybe some more public input. But um, unless there's been a lot more discussion going on behind the scenes than any of us know about, I'd prefer to see it wait and come up with something really good and solid that we can all agree on or live with. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Baggett, I think the last one, is he here? I, I don't right. see him in here. All right. Finished with public comment. Let's go to the agenda, Ms. Whitby. Yeah. Okay. Unfinished business, RO9-118, Alderman Baggett and Gaines. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll see what we can do on that next time, Alderman. Uh, that'll be held next time, Miss Miss uh, Whitby. Oh, 0947, Alderman Robinson. I'd like to make some comments. The purpose of this legislation was not to put anyone out of business. We have a body shop that have had uh, inoperable vehicle in front of his property for almost two years and um, I don't know if with that particular body shop if they're still waiting on parts however we do have restrictions on people who live in neighborhoods they can't have inoperable vehicles. They can't have wrecked vehicles. And as I stated, this is not to put anyone out of business. There should be uh, something that can be done. Now, as far as grandfathering, I don't think we can grandfather what is considered a nuisance. 
and uh, the city attorney, you know, making correct me on that. And with that said, Mayor, I just like to call it. Uh, let's go ahead and get it before us, and uh, and I assume by calling it, Miss Whitby, you go ahead and read it. An ordinance amending Chapter Eight, Nuisance Abatement and Property Maintenance of the North Little Rock Municipal Code, and Ordinance Number Seventy Six Ninety Seven, the Zoning Ordinance regarding inoperable or wrecked vehicles. Third and final reading. Uh, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? S second. Now we're in discussion. Question. Uh, Mr. Tolliver's property is in Ward 3, and I'd just like to, you know, see what the aldermen in that ward think about this. It's because it's in theirs. It's on a main thoroughfare. It's right there on MacArthur. I'm just curious what they think about that. Well, we helped, we helped uh, last year Mr. Tolliver get, get his muffler shop rezoned over in your area, and we worked on um, doing whatever we can with the business. What the problem, the, the only one I see that in our ward is affected is Mr. Tolliver on MacArthur. I don't see how it affects uh, Mr. Tolliver's, mu Tolliver's muffler shop or anything like that. What uh, I checked with most of the other places in our area, and it just it seems like uh, it's one of those, I told Mr. Tolliver about six weeks ago, I thought this would pass. I thought that uh, there wasn't going to be anything that we could do about it. We couldn't uh, grandfather in a nuisance was what the the city attorney, I believe the term was, whatever this abatement would be. So the bottom line is we want to help Mr. Tolliver, but I can't find anyone else that it affects except for Mr. Tolliver. So with all that said, um, as I told Ms. Robinson, when it all came right down to it, that I'd love to see some way to help protect him. He has been in business a long time. He's done a, a, a job out there, but on the other hand, people are uh, concerned about the wrecked cars out there and you know it's just a it's, I don't know how Mr. Baggett feels but it's just uh, an unfortunate uh, uh, situation and I wish was different but at this point in time it's not and I'm not being very politically correct or maybe however I want to say this but we just want to work with him any way we can but I would not think, Ms. Alden Roberts, I don't think, and you have let me know, that this affects anyone else to this degree. Do you? It affects other uh, body shops as well and, and other uh, car places as well. Rose City in particular, East Broadway. So he's not the only one. He's the only one that has come down to speak about it. But there are others that this will affect. Well, I should have said it. there's no one else that I know of west of Camp, west of Pike. So the, that I, I mean, I went to most of them out there and talked to them about it. So I just don't know. Uh, I don't want to do anything. None of us want to do anything to be hurtful. But the other, uh, on the other hand, I know where the votes are on this. And I know, um, you know, I don't know what the city attorney or the mayor or anyone can do. If there's anything at all can be done just to work through some of this. But I don't, you know, answer your question. He does know. not have... Uh, property a side yard that he can close in and, and put these vehicles no it's, it's too near a railroad track the only thing he possibly do that might be helpful would be put up a fence around the front and the side of it get a waiver you know you know I would like to help I don't I don't spend much time I know we'll let everybody there, talk is there, emer is there an emergency clause attached no sir okay so when does that when does that mean it goes into effect if it's adopted tonight? 90 days 90 days, 90 days. Uh, you know, the only thing I can say is, I mean, I don't know whether it's going to pass or not, but, but I'd certainly be willing to see if there's anything that could be done within that 90-day period that might be beneficial and certainly meet the, uh, you know, the goals and, and objectives of legislation. Again, that's assuming it passes. So if it passes tonight, again, then it doesn't go into effect for 90 days. And if there is anything that perhaps factually or legally that, that, that we think the council might be inclined to make some exception, if that's possible, uh, then then we have that time to do that. Uh, should it pass tonight, Alderwoman Ross? Well, in this, if you'll look under number C in here, it, it says you know that that if they cannot do an if they cannot have an enclosure, I mean, it specifically is talking about Mr. Oliver is what you would think, you know, that he can apply for a variance with the planning department, and so that you know that would be his option. And I talked to Mr. Tolliver today; he has nine bays, and he's moved some cars out, but you know what? 
and I'm not just singling him out because there's plenty of them, but his was the one that I went to look by because he was talking about it. But, you know, like broken windshields laying in the back of the place, that's not acceptable. I mean, not when people can drive by and look at that. That, you know, you don't need that laying around. And that can be cleaned up, but he can't apply for a variance, though, with the planning department. Alderman Taylor? And just as to uh, uh, speak on, on uh, what Alderwoman Robinson was saying, that we, we've t make, taken painstaking efforts to clean up East Broadway, Washington Avenue, 161. Uh, I mean, we, it, if you drive down through there, it, it's, we, we got to do something. And I'm sure that Alderwoman Robinson, in, in this isn't to single anybody out, it is to beautify uh, those areas, but the whole, the, the city as a whole. So we, we have just got to do something to, to clean up this, th those areas in our world because it, it, it's a mess. And if, you know, all the money that's being spent to, to uh, re redo East Broadway and we're trying to do things to clean up Washington Avenue, we, we've got to do something. So I'm, I'm in full support of it. You want to say that? Alderman Baggett. Like Kerry said, we want to be in the business of helping people and not hurting people. Um, you can get a fly with the planning department to get some help through that. However we can help you, we'll be glad to do it. Uh, any other council member? Uh, where are we, Ms. Whitby? Uh, it's been read three times and there is a motion pending. Uh, any further discussion? Just one one clarification question. I know, I know uh, Ms. Jones <coughs> or Paula <laughs> wasn't here last council meeting, but Car uh, Jason Carter kind of explained the definition of inoperable and wrecked as opposed to a car sitting out in front of a body shop that's operable and has damage to it. What's the difference? Probably if it's sitting there waiting to be fixed or not. That's what it sounds like to me. You know, I mean, a, a car that's inoperable or a car that's wrecked is, is, is destined for the salvage yard, probably. And if there, you know, if there are body shops in town that are, have got inoperable or wrecked vehicles out in front, they need to move them. But if they're operable and they're not totally destroyed or totally wrecked, what's the problem with keeping them out front? What you're trying to do is clean up. We're trying to. You're clean trying to get. You're trying to get some vehicles moved to the salvage yard, correct? <laughs> We're trying to clean up, and don't necessarily want wreck inoperable vehicles. Now, there's a difference if someone have taken their car to a body shop and they're waiting on it to be fixed. Now, that's different. That's what, Mr. Uh, that's different. But yes, there Tolliver. are some body shops that have had wrecked vehicles sitting on their lots a long time. And, you know, I don't know how long it takes parts to come in. And there are some car lots that have cars with no wheels, no motors, sitting up on blocks, and they've been sitting there for six months. I guess they're waiting on parts. Well, I understand that, but then why penalize the businesses in town that don't have those type of vehicles? The legislation, parked out in front? the legislation is for wrecked and inoperable vehicles. Excuse me. Go ahead. Wrecked and inoperable vehicles. Inoperable. If a car is sitting to be fixed, you know, because it has a dent in it, 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 you know, that's different. But if a car is inoperable and wrecked and just sitting in front of the lot, and there's nothing code can do about it. I think we're pretty close to voting. Uh, Alderman Baggett? That was that our... Be the last comment, and then we're going to vote. That was our understanding, Mayor, that if the car was there and it had been in a wreck, but it still ran, and it was, you know, it was dented and it was there to be fixed, it was fine. But if it had been sitting there for a year or two or three, and they're taking parts off of it and old windshields laying around and things like that, then that's, that, I wouldn't think that'd be acceptable. And that was our understanding of the legislation. 
On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Hype? No. In Witcher? Yes. Motion carries. There's no emergency. Uh, Mr. Tolliver, we've got 90 days, and and uh, and you know, you obviously, you got a right to go to the board of adjustment, uh, and you know, we'll sure sensitive to hopefully be sensitive to your situation. Does this not order a little bit on? Talk from down there. I'm sorry, you know, that would have to be taken up with city attorney's office. We're going to try to do the best we can. Uh, next item. New business, resolution 09120, Mayor Hayes. Please uh, call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 2105 Moss Street in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning such structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Uh, get a motion. Move for adoption. Is there a second? A second. second. Pardon? I, I want to. Uh, we go ahead and convene a public hearing on 2105 Moss Street. That's 2105 Moss Street. Uh, uh, the listed owner is E O L A Eola Malicom, M A L A N C O N. Uh, anyone want to speak on that property? Going once, going twice. Uh, adjourn the public hearing. Call for the vote. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. In Witcher? Yes. Resolution 09-121, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 1012 North I Street in the city of North Little Rock constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Can I get a motion to adopt? So moved. Move. Second. Be made and seconded. Uh, got to convene a public hearing on 1012. North Walt, North? North I Street. Street. North I Street. Okay, you're right. North I Street. Uh, that is listed owner as Walnut Grove Baptist Church Trustee Board. So that's 1012 North I Street. Uh, <coughs> and being that public hearing, anyone want to talk to us about this piece of property? During the public hearing, call for the vote. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. In Witcher? Yes. Resolution 09 122, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution approving amounts of liens to be certified to the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real properties as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Uh, do you. I had a note that this one needed a public hearing, too. Well, From okay, the city let's office. do that then. Okay. Convene a public hearing. I see what you said that now. Convene a public hearing on anybody who wants to talk about liens uh, that are to be certified uh, as listed in R09122 uh, uh, to the uh, Pulaski County Tax Collector regarding grass cutting and abatement of other nuisances. nuisances. Uh, anyone want to come talk to us about that? Adjourn the public hearing. Call for the vote. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 09 123, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution extending the moratorium on issuance of permits for electronic changeable copy signs through September 30, 2009. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? No. Baggett? No. Hype? No. And Witcher? Yes. Motion carries. R09124, Mayor Hayes. Mayor, before, oh, we, before we move on, uh, like, <clears throat> I, I have visited with you and I have visited with Ms. Ross regarding this issue, uh, and there are a number of folks on the council that are, that are interested in it. Uh, and I was wondering if perhaps we could sit down in a work session sometime in the next several weeks uh, and, and talk about this issue. Uh, it's sometime that those who are interested could could meet, you know, being the day or, or the evening, whatever, so we can work through some of the issues that we all have. Uh, that certainly would be fine with uh, with me. Uh, obviously, again, uh, you know, subject to FOI requirements, uh, I think that might very well be a good idea. And uh, you know, to get try to get some movement on this, we have. You know, extended it again, and uh, and I would hope that we could move toward try to uh, crystallize our opinions into legislation uh, within the time frame of the extension. So, you know, uh, feel free, uh, anybody, to contact my office. I'll be happy to try to 
we'll say uh, rally around a date or a time. We'll notify the press, and uh, you know, anyone that wants to be a part of it, certainly welcome. If you don't have any suggestions now, just tell us when you'll be available, and we'll see what we can do. Would anyone be interested in doing it during daylight hours? <laughs> what? You would. <laughs> now, daylight hours goes to about 8.30 now. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess, I'm, you know, I, I know we all have some perspective on what we're interested in seeing, and I think probably one of the first steps we might do is to, is to collect those perspectives uh, so we at least have a list of them to, to look at and start from. Uh, and I'll, I'll either work through uh, the city clerk's office or through your office, Mayor, and, and get that done, and then, and then perhaps we'll- Let me volunteer Mr. Voles Mr. and Voles? the city clerk's office. Okay. Uh, you know, not that I want to duck or dodge it, but uh, you know, Mr. Voles will be happy to work with you, I'm sure Ms. Whitby, and, uh, and you know, anything that they need that we can help with, we'll be happy to. Okay. Just, who would be interested in, in, in working on this? I know Ms. Rosswood, Ms. White, Mr. Taylor. Okay. What exactly are, are we helping you coordinate your meeting? What exactly are we doing? <laughs> well, well, first of all, I think we're going to try to find a date within okay. the next several weeks, or I don't know. You, you, you yeah. know it might be good if we try to do it right now, save everybody a coordinated phone call if you wanted to, Alderman. Uh, if not, then Mr. Voles or Ms. Whitby just try to coordinate a date and make sure I don't, I, the, you know, the council chambers I'm sure will be available with a few exceptions. Uh, and then whatever you need from planning, you know, whatever alternatives that you might need, whatever information you might want, either to have available or distributed ahead of time, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, depending on when you have it, I know uh, the following week I'm going to be out of pocket, but I don't know that I'm necessary you know, to, to be a part of it. So, Alderman Witcher, I'd... You know, suggest Can I make a suggestion? This? Yes, ma'am. I think we're going to have to work through Miss Whitby because not all of us have our calendars here, so we That's couldn't fine. give you a date anyway. Yeah. That's fine. Just why, you know, why don't why don't you work through Miss Whitby to try to come up with a date, and then uh, you know I would you know I would suggest since Alter, Alderman Witcher opened his uh, you know his suggestion that he be the we'll say the, uh, the the organizing chair if you want to put it that way, unless unless the group decides otherwise, and uh, and then. Mr. Voles and Ms. Whitby can be staff and we'll be supporting. The mayor's office will be happy to support whatever else might need to be done to help work through this work session. Okay, thank you, Mayor. All right. I think what I'd like to do then is, is uh, I'll send an email out to all the council folks, the mayor and the clerk and Mr. Voles tomorrow and ask for, ask for them to list their concerns that they have and, and we'll get, to, if, with her permission, the clerk's office to collect that for us, and uh, and then uh, we'll look at some dates, and then let the press know. Sounds good. Okay, will this be a working session with everyone, just council members and the press, or anyone that wants to have input into it? Uh, that's up to y'all. If it is, then we need to just ask everybody to email us if they want information concerning this. You know, I mean, the only call. thought I have, and it's certainly up to y'all, but the only thought I had is that you might want to at least have one meeting uh, to try to, you know, decide how you might want to have that input, uh, and you know, rather than have people waiting while you sort of discuss and organize, uh, that it might be at least entail two meetings, uh, and that the first one you sort of, you know, look at alternatives, other approaches, and then, then if anybody wants to have any input, then you have a subsequent. That'd be my suggestion, but that's up to y'all. So I think the first day is, is the date and then try to establish some agenda. Grant the ground rules. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Next item. R09-124, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. Resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to purchase certain real property located at 814 Maple Street in the city of North Little Rock and appropriating funds. Do you have a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Osborne, this, is, this piece of property is the only one left, as I understand it, on, on, on a block. We own everything around it. Uh, you know, we've had some interest in purchasing it for a while, 
you know, the, the lady lived there. She recently passed away, if I'm not mistaken. And this is available, and it'll make, uh, you know, it'll, it'll give us all contiguous uh, real estate in that entire lot. And, uh, you know, the purchase price is reasonable, and uh, we'd hope the council would approve it. Any other questions? On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 09-125, Mayor Hayes? Please call it. A resolution approving a residential anti-displacement and relocation assistance plan, RARAP, under the Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. second. All right, Ms. Bowman. Uh, I was just going to say that because we receive uh, federal funds from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, we require, the city is required to have an anti-displacement uh, and relocation assistance plan, and that's what's before you tonight, and basically I followed all the federal regulations that are in this plan. Uh, probably we'll never use it because I'm not sure we'll ever displace someone because it's a very, very expensive uh, proposition when you do that. It almost like triples the project. But anyway, we do have to have a plan. We have to have an approved plan. So that's what this is. Questions on the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinances? Ordinance 0951, Alderman Taylor? Please call it. An ordinance allowing a special use for a liquor store in a C3 zone for certain real property located at 11100 Highway 165 in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, first reading. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the second reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance allowing a special use for a liquor store in a C3 zone for certain real property located at 11100 Highway 165 in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, second reading. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the third reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance allowing a special use for a liquor store in a C3 zone for certain real property located at 11100 Highway 165 in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Third and final reading. I think that finger up it indicates you want to ask a question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I just wonder, have we had any opposition to this in the neighborhood or anything? Has anyone heard anything? I had, I had no calls, no, not anything. Is Mr. Bowles here to... Mr. Boyle is coming to the microphone. I haven't had any opposition. We did no, not. No call. And I didn't think there was any. We didn't okay. receive any opposition. Okay. The neighbors behind it are supportive. Oh, cool. Yeah. I haven't had any calls either. This is located near, uh, what, Cypress Crossing? It is. It's on 165. Uh, there. Half his property is C4 and half is C3. And it was approved uh, by mistake. And we caught it uh, before they had their sign up. But... Uh, you know, he can build a strip center on the C4 section and it'd be legal. So we're going through this special use process. It's part of the little strip mall. Yeah, I think, I think the residents in that area are excited to see any, any uh, type of development. It's a, a nice, clean development, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll be successful. Let's get another motion. I always, when we stop and talk, I like to get a motion. So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross. Top, third and final. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. On the emergency. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Ordinance 0953, Alderman Taylor. Please call it. An ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 3113 East Washington <coughs> Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from R4 and C4 to I1 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property. First reading. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the second reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 3113 East Washington Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from R4 to C4 to I1 classification by amending Ordinance 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property. Second reading. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the third reading. Second. On the motion. 
Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Pipe? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 3113 East Washington Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from R4 and C4 to I1 classification by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property third and final reading. Alderman Robinson? I'd like to ask Mr. Voles a question. My question is, why did the owner decide to go with I-1? Well, the building was used for a warehouse for a long time, but it wasn't zoned correctly. Part of it was R-4 and part of it was C-4. He wanted to come in and do some brokering uh, warehousing of shoes uh, at that location with an expansion. And we're, you know, we looked under warehouse, and that's a light industrial type classification. So it just best fits under the zoning ordinance uh, to be light industrial. Now it is a good bit of light industrial around that area to the east and west, uh, north and south. The, uh, the old salvage yard is across the street and uh, there is a church nearby, but Second Street of course is residential to the west, but a good bit around this is light industrial in nature. And he's only going to have shoes? That's, uh, yes ma'am, that's what I mean, he's zone, rezoning it to I-1, and that's a, his business plan, is to do a brokering of shoes. And now, how long his business exists, I don't know. And with the I-1 classification, nothing can go in there that would be harmful to the community. Am I correct? Well, it's a light industrial uh, type use. There, it will be a little, you know, a block away from most of the residential core, so there'll be some buffering uh, from the residential in the area, but light industrial sometimes has trucking related things and uh, other things that sometimes have hazards associated with them, but uh, these, this, this proposal is for shoe brokering and warehousing. Okay, thanks. You want to get a final motion? Adopt. Move to adopt. <laughs> there a second? Second. It would, let me just make sure when when we're kind of flowing through things and a lot of times I don't call for a motion on final on third and final after we spend the rules but whenever we stop for discussion then in order to ensure that there is a, an understanding that this is third and final that's why I always like to call for a motion on third and final uh, even though if there's no questions then we go ahead and vote if there are questions then it's been my practice to go ahead and ask for that on third and final. So motion made and seconded on the motion, Ms. Whitby. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Concludes new business. Alderman Gaines? Closing out. Uh, yeah, any council member, the way we normally do things, just any council member has any comments, and then we open the floor to four people. All right, Mayor, I just wanted to remind everyone in the Amboy area that the Amboy Neighborhood Association and the Amboy Crime Watch Group are going to have a national night out next week, uh, Tuesday, August 4th, at Amboy United Methodist Church, 311 East Military Drive, from 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to have watermelon. Uh, any of the city council like to come, we'd love to have them. we have hot dogs, have a lot of fun for the kids. And a leader of both groups um, had lost someone. Our thoughts and prayers are with her, uh, Marianne Conley, tonight in, in the loss of her husband, Robert, on Saturday. And uh, like I said, she's been a real leader of both groups, Mayor, and we want to just pray about her and think about her tonight. Thanks. Lower yours. Well, you took care of Ward 3. I was going to read the different national night outs. But I asked Mr. I want to do that okay, all right. In Ward 1, on, uh, this is August the 4th for national night out, the Lakewood Neighborhood uh, Group, Park, uh, Lakewood Property Owners Association, and Lakewood Methodist Church, and the North Little Rock Athletic Club. They'll all be coming together for national night out. It will be at Lakewood Methodist Church from 6 to 8 p.m. They're going to have fire trucks, kids activities, snow cones, hot dogs, several things there. Is there anything else I missed on that one? Okay, and then the Park Hill Neighborhood Group will be having uh, National Night Out 3427 North Magnolia from 6 to 730. They have a lot of activities. It's potluck, 
bring you a dish and they're going to have all the other stuff. And then Friends will be at 15th and Chandler Street from 6 to 10. They will be having food, music, games, and fun. And I'll let Ward 2, do you want to do yours? Yeah, but I'm not going to read them out like you around. did. We'll let everyone Reason pass around. <laughs> uh, the young, young community advocates of Baron Cross will be having one at, from uh, 630 to 830. Uh, Meadow Park Neighborhood Association uh, at the corner of Eureka Garden Road and Bethany Road and Glenview Neighborhood Association will be on Glenview Boulevard from 6 to 9. Okay, okay. What about your Citizens Police Academy, 201 East Broadway? Oh, yeah, the, the you're, you're absolutely correct. North Little Rock Citizens Police Academy will be at 201 East Broadway from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Why don't, uh, why don't Ms. Whitby, you work and let's post these on our website. Uh, well, I, was gonna not already. I was going to say at the end that uh, we have the list if they want to check with us or Mr. Scott, Dan Scott's office, okay. put this list together. And I'm sure Ward 3, well, they've already done theirs. Ward 4 may want to do theirs. And we will. Uh, <laughs> if you're not having fun at the uh, Lakewood Methodist Church, uh, come over to 4533 Purnell Drive from 7 to 9 o'clock. This is in the Lakewood Northeast area. And have some ice cream with us at 730. And if you don't get to go to anything that Tuesday night, on Wednesday, August the 5th, you can go to Ward 2 to the Melrose Community Outreach. Yeah, and one of the things, and let me just uh, again acknowledge Alderman uh, Baggett. You know, when for many years, the uh, the largest and and certainly one that was enjoyed by many, you know, was uh, a, a music uh, performance that was put on by a variety of uh, entertainers. Uh, every once in a while, I think Alderman Baggett would get up there and mm -hmm. strum a little bit, and you, you know, I, I complimented him on his talent. Maybe we can get him to do that one night. For council uh, in the community, <laughs> uh, but he, uh, you know, certainly uh, worked hard. Uh, this is a great night. It sure seems like the community has ah. has embraced it, and uh, and please uh, attend one of these, Miss Whitby. If you'll help me work to get a list of these on our city website, so if people forget uh, and want to pick one out, that they can go to the website and we'll make sure some way or another they can link it up but this is a grand time to spend some time and fun and uh, enjoy getting to know your neighbors or refreshing some old friendships uh, any, all I, said two, Ross. I said two more things you know I've always wanted an update on the stimulus and I don't know if Mr. Drake is back up is he Mr. still out Drake of town is back and, and I've assigned him that chore and uh, we're gonna have something up by the next council meeting okay and I do want to brag on the electric department because if you go to NLR Green <laughs> Dot org. The electric department does have their stimulus up there, their, you know, what they've applied for and everything. So I want to brag on them. One more thing and I'll be done for the night. Signs that say, welcome to North Little Rock. We need to look at that. And when you're coming across the bridge, we, I've had several people tell me they don't even know when they're in North Little Rock. You know, you see them going into Little Rock, but they don't know when they're coming into North Little Rock. So we, would that be Mr. Marvin that we need to talk to on that? Mr. Marvin and Mr. Voles, y'all coordinate with that and make sure that, uh, you know that that you know that number one we have them up, but number two we'll think about whether we can make them uh, a little bit more, we'll say, appealing than simply the signs that are up. But the first instance, let's uh, you know, uh, Mr. Bowles, why don't you touch base with Miss uh, Ross and uh, and then Mr. Marvin, and let's ensure that all our signs are up, and uh, and then maybe we'll work to see if we can give a little character to them. Alderman Baggett. If, uh, if Mr. Lane, Patrick Lane, is still here in the building, we'd like to meet with him for just a minute or two after the... Mr. After Lane, if you're over watching uh, TV and looking at us, I think uh, Ms. Bowman nods that he should be. Uh, come on over here in and, and a minute or two, and uh, we've got two-thirds ward aldermen like to visit with you. Okay, public comment. We've got Mr. Ralph Baggett, excuse me, yeah, Ralph Baggett, Bobby Taylor, Joe Reynolds, and Jim Ard. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to speak, you know, but you're not required. Mayor? Mr. Baggett hasn't come back, so I, okay. Mr. Baggett hasn't okay. come back. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Mayor, I, this evening there was an article in the paper, and I don't know where that's. Uh, Mr. Hyde, you probably know about this. 
at these kids taking over the street. At these, at these kids taking over the street, walking, fighting, just turning their back on vehicles. There was an article in the paper today, something pertaining to courtesy everybody. About kids uh, in the streets? Yeah, just walking, 15, 20, 30 of them, you know, and they turn their back on you when you get within a hundred foot of them. I haven't, I don't have any knowledge of that. Not up in my, my not up in my ward. I, I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know, there's, a, there's an article in the paper about it. But anyhow, the uh, last, uh, well, it was Monday. Uh, <coughs> Monday evening, about, about five o'clock, I was on my way home, and they was at uh, Adkins and Protho. And uh, they had the whole street block, and I just sat there a couple of minutes, and they just kind of eased over to the right-hand side. And when I start, got over on the wrong side of the road and started around them, they started cussing. I hadn't even said nothing to them. And they were so close to the truck, they was beating on the side of the truck. <coughs> Wednesday, they done the same thing, but not to me. There was a car in the intersection of Haywood and Protho. I don't even know who was in the car. There was 15 or 20 kids around the car, and I got over on the left-hand side and went on past it on the wrong side of the road, but I got past it. They let me go through there, and they was rocking that car, that blue car. Today, uh, about 5.15, there was a police car went over the railroad track pretty fast right ahead of me, <coughs> and uh, there's where he was going, to Protho and Haywood, and I seen a phone give from one girl to another, and I seen a lick passed upside the head. And I don't know whether the policeman seen that or not, because he pulled up there to uh, Haywood, and I seen his backup lights come on, and he come backwards, so I stopped. He sat there a little bit, and his backup lights went off, so I don't know what he was called to that, uh, or what. But we've been having a lot of trouble, and I know the police is working on it. But my question is, I was told by one that if it's sidewalk, they can do something about it. If it's not sidewalks, they can't do nothing about it. To me, I don't care which side of the road I drive on when there's nothing to coming. I mean, I'll give them the street, but I'd like to have enough for my truck either on the right, left, or through the middle. Where I can go home, get me something to eat, and get a little rest, and come back to work the next day to help pay a few pennies of y'all's salary. And I think we deserve some help on this. I don't know what's gonna be done or what, but the only thing I think about is somebody running through a bunch of them and hurting them. That, that's gonna happen if it, if it keeps up. Cause there's rocks, I have seen rocks thrown at these cars further down the street, down to uh, Protho and uh, uh, Rogers, that's one block behind me. There's about three or four different places that they gang up, and these kids don't even live in this neighborhood. So I thought I'd just leave that to y'all for y'all to work on, see if it's something you could do before before someone gets hurt. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, that was really pretty good. It hit zero after three minutes just when you walked away. I want to congratulate you on your three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> to move. Oh, Mr. Ard, you decide oh, yeah, Mr. Ard. Talk, yeah. Mayor, I have yes, I have a good deal for you tonight. We have a win, 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 win situation if possible. Mr. Yates wants to do a salute to the soldiers. You want to do a monument. That means with bricks fallen soldiers and all this. He's wanting to salute them as they come in to Camp Robinson for training or whatever. Then we got the lady who doesn't want it at Mr. Yates' place. And we got the citizens over here, the people in the wars that do want it there. I'll make a suggestion. If Alderman Witcher can get money for a swimming pool, why can't this council say give $30,000 let Mr. Yates raise some money and all the volunteers we can get to do this. Let's do the salute. 
It doesn't matter which corner it goes on. It can go on any of the corners. Going into Camp Robinson, they can't put it at Camp Robinson. Let's do your memorial where you'd like it so we can do the bricks with the minutes falling. That's just a solution. solution. Suggestion, I'm sorry. I'd like to see one of your council members come up with what it takes to make that part of your activities so you can help support that. When you have someone in your family that falls because they're protecting our country, it comes home to you. Let's let the ones that's still living have that salute. It doesn't have to be at Mr. Yates's place. On one of those corners would be great. Thank you. I have a motion. Okay. On the motion. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Pike? Yes. Witcher? Yes.